So a little bit about how this talk kind of came about. Um, I actually went to, there's a data science conference called Open Data Science West that happens once a year on the West Coast. I went out there and I attended a few different sessions and there was one person talking about data visualizations in Python and they had spent almost the entire talk talking, you know, using matplotlib and then at the very end just started touching on Seaborn and then everybody in the room was like, why didn't we talk about Seaborn the entire time? Because, you know, Seaborn is, you know, it's built on top of matplotlib, it gives you additional plot types that you don't have in matplotlib, you have improved default styles, and it's really a lot easier to create complicated plots. I actually tried to go through and create equivalent plots for each of the examples in here, but it started to get a little too cumbersome to get there, so I was like, you know what, we'll just focus on Seaborn. And so, I never really use it. So, um, you know, this is just your usual import of pandas and Seaborn, NumPy, and you still have to import in matplotlib. I did turn off the warnings. There is some, there's a warning that keeps popping up. Um, from what I understood, it doesn't really affect anything right now, not for a while, but couldn't figure out what within the code was causing it to be thrown, so I can share the warning with you, but I turned it off for purposes here because it just kept popping up continuously. Um, for this, for these examples, I used a Pokemon data set I found. There was another individual that had kind of used some of this data to do some similar examples, and so I figured, you know, Pokemon's rel relevant. You know, we got Detective Pikachu coming out next year, so why not? So, you know, importing in the data set, there's a couple of uh, different ones I had to create based on the plots that I decided to make. I had to group them by type one and stage, looked at the different variables within it to make sure I was calling them correctly. And I also created kind of like a subset based on type one Pokemon that were the electric, fire, ice, and water because there were so many types, some of the graphs just looked a little bit too busy and you couldn't really get an appreciation for what was there. So the first one that I created was a annotated heat map, which I thought was really neat to see. Um, one thing I did notice is a lot of the documentation said to put a D here to get the annotations and it does not work. You have to put the dot 1F. I don't, I'm not sure why it was just something I happened to come across in the Google universe, but that fixed the plots and made them look nice and neat. And you could actually read the annotations before it was just creating, it was just jargon that was in there, it didn't make any sense. So this actually plots type one Pokemon by their different stages, and so you can kind of see where they all fit. You can see like the highest ones have the lightest color, so you have a rock Pokemon at stage three, that's pretty great. Another thing I did is I went through and I actually created, you know, the same heat the heat map, but with different colors. So the color schemes that you have in Seaborn are, are really nice. The default ones are great, but then there's a ton of them. You can make your own custom color schemes if you want as well, and it's really easy. Another one I made was a pair grid, and so this took a little bit more of like data finessing to get it in the format necessary to create the plot. But at the end, once I got it all done, you end up with this is kind of a, a pair grid where the Pokemon are sorted by their total kind of a score based off a combination of each of these six pieces. And you can kind of see ice is your Pokemon type with your highest total. And you can kind of see the distribution breakdown between HP attack, defense speed, special attacks and special defense. Initially, I did have the total column at the top, but because it was such all on a larger scale, it just didn't make it look that great. It kind of caused the scale on all of the x-axes to be too wide, so I just decided to take it to these six. But you can see it's kind of graded in color as well. You have your ones at the top of your dark, are your darker colors, the ones at the bottom are your lighter. So it's just kind of a neat way to provide a nice looking visualization very quickly. 
I'm going to show you guys some KDE plots that you can do in Seaborn. So this one's kind of, it looks at water and fire type Pokemon, and you have attack on the x-axis, and then you have speed on the y, and it just shows you the, the KDE plots for both of those, and you can kind of see there's a lot of overlap, but your fire definitely has a lot more diversity to it as far as these two pieces go. So water is kind of concentrated in one area. One thing I wanted to try and look at is a way to actually create a little bit of a, an overlay between them, so that way it was almost like transparency so you could see the, the fire. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, and honestly, again, trying to make these in Matplotlib, it was just taking too much time. Like, it was, this is, I mean, there's a little bit more code for this one just because I had to do a little finagling with the data set. I had to subset them so that way, actually this is supposed to be Pokemon. So I had to subset the Pokemon data set, one into water, one into fire, so that way I created two separate plots on here. But really, I mean, if you look at it, it's pretty straightforward. And this is just really add adding like the color palette that I wanted for the two different ones and then adding some of the text. So it's just really kind of adding just some modifications to it. Some other plots that are in there are, and these again, these are all by default. I hardly did any modifications to most of these. And usually it's just one line of code that created these. So here's a bar plot. This does stage by total. And then you have the type one. For this one, to make it look a little bit cleaner, I only made it to where there was uh, stage one and two because there's only one Pokemon that apparently has a stage three. And then this is another one you can make. And again, the you can kind of change the palette up, but it breaks out your type one by count. So you could easily change what you want on the y-axis. This is another pretty neat one. It's essentially just kind of turning it to where instead of having your x-axis, it's on your y-axis, and it's just a different way of showing it. It's, uh, what do they call that? In, it's like the horizontal bar plot in Excel. Point plots are really neat, and it actually gives you the error bars on it already, like it's de by default included. So this does your stages by the uh, level of attack, and then I, I just grouped fire and water, because again, I, I had two other kinds on there, but it just didn't look as clean. Another thing you could do, so this is kind of a modification to the point plot, is where I change the colors and then also change the actual data point. So one is a triangle, the other is a dot, and then another has uh, dashes. And so again, very simple lines of code to create and modify it. So some plots that actually show you the multiple relationships between variables. This is like the categorical plot, so you can break it out into basically three different levels. So I have the stages, the types, but then I also, there's actually a hue, there's a hue that you can add. So you can categorize them by a third variable. So I did element versus other. So the Pokemons that were related to like an element, like an element such as fire, wind, water, those sort of things were grouped together and so there's the, the color was added. So it's really a way to see lots of different levels of your data in a simple plot. This is an other one that essentially takes the box plots and kind of flips them a little bit and adds the log, log, ugh, log scale on it. So it's just kind of another way you can see the distribution of your data if you want. This is using, so these next few use what's called the facet grid, and so they use this so you can visualize higher dimensional relationships between um, variables in your data, and so this breaks it down by the stages, but then you can actually do like the attack by defense, and then still adding the hue on there to break it out by your uh, secondary variable of element or however you wanna do it. As you can see, there's only element Pokemon in stage three, And this is just a, a different type of plot that you can do where you can break it out by stage and attack. And then you have your element in your other category. So it just kind of depends on the person you're talking to, how they want to see their data, 
You have a lot of options, and honestly, I don't cover, I bear, cover maybe a fraction of the plots that are available in Seaborn. These are really probably the more basic ones you can do. Categorical scatter plots, simple, literally one line of code. You just put in what you want your X and Y axes to be, and you tell it what your data set is, and there you go. You can have a nice plot by the three. Another um, plot, basically it's the same one as the top one, but you add in the jitter component, and so that actually controls the magnitude of the jitter, or you can disable it. So in this case, I disabled it, and so you get nice looking lines. Or you can do a bee swarm plot, so that way none of the actual dots overlap. So it's another way to kind of see the distribution if you want, as well kind of get the, not only the volume, but also the density a little bit. So this is pretty neat, and so you add the hue semantic to it, so then if you wanted to add an additional piece to it, not only breaking it out by stage in total, you can then add the type, I did type one in here, it seemed to be the easiest, but you can see how some of them are clustered together, it's just, again, a nice easy way to add an additional layer. So this one is another kind of swarm that I did just to see, just to show you guys, and then this is where I, you basically just kind of flip it. So instead of your type one, you know, the type one variable being on the x-axis, you just kind of flip it. So again, decide, determines based on your preference. Box plots seem to be pretty, um, something that a lot of people want to see. So this is your basic plot, 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 ugh, box plot in Seaborn. And then here's another way you can add in an additional level such as stage. So this one's, you know, it doesn't look that great. So I was like, oh, I wonder if I can make it look any better. I added the dodge equals false. So what the dodge does is it, instead of breaking out each of your categories across the x-axis, is then clusters them all together. But in this case, because I actually had enough Pokemon in each of the different stages, it just kind of compiled them on top of one another. So to clean it up, I then added this piece. So it then takes the four types, and then it adds the color code and breaks it out whether it's a water Pokemon and then it adds like a false true. So it's pretty neat. So how you do that right here, you just tell it that you want the type one to be water and then you can add it as a hue here and then it does your colors for you. Another kind of interesting plot is where you make it a boxin plot. So instead of it just being a single size box, this again gives you a little bit more of the density to it. So it tells you kind of where more of your data points are clustered. So it's just kind of a different way of visualizing it. And then some violin plots with KDE. Again, these all were, I couldn't, I, the one thing I liked about this exercise and going through this and putting these together is again, when I tried to do the matplotlib equivalent, it, it was way too cumbersome to get them to look almost exactly the same. Here's one where you can actually split the violin, so that way you can have like two different stages. So instead of it being where it's stage one and two, it essentially puts them all on one plot for you, makes it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit neater. And then another thing you can actually do is add individual data points on the violin plot. So if you, so each of these represents a different data point or different observations. So it's kind of a, a different way you want to see your data. And then it gave the palette of pastel because if you would have kept it on this darker color, you wouldn't have been able to see the actual lines. And then this is an example of combining your like a swarm plot with a violin plot. So there's ways you can actually do combinations of your plots pretty easily. And then I'll get through the, let me see, trying to make sure I'm good on time. So I'll, I'll scroll through these because I tried to put together a few different examples with this data set. Here's a general KDE plot, your two-dimensional KDE that you can do. I thought this one was pretty neat because I feel like it doesn't look like your atypical graph to somebody or visualization and sometimes giving somebody that's a higher up that doesn't really look at data figures sometimes, giving them something that actually looks like a picture can make a huge difference. So I thought this was a neat way to display essentially the same information on the two previous graphs but just in literally just a color scheme. So, and this is where you can increase the contour levels to cause this to, to create this type of graph. 
This one actually is the KDE plot, but then it adds the individual data points on it. Again, it's kind of nice to see. And then your general, you could do your pairwise relationships, general histograms, and I'll share this kind of sample book with the Jupyter Notebook with everybody so you guys can kind of go through it because it was nice to use an example that wasn't already on like the Python website for Seaborn because I, I wanted to actually be able to recreate it for myself and so went through and did that. You can do scatter plots with the histograms on the X and Y. I kind of like the hex bin plot. I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, they they say that you want to try and actually make it more in like the white style, but you could change this to where it's in the darker color scheme or things like that if you don't want to necessarily see it, but they say it's easier for people to actually see the gradient if you keep it in the white with the hex bin. And that's kind of just a basic introduction to some of the really cool visualizations in Seaborn. And just wanted to kind of share that with you because I don't think very many people realize it's there. Again, I went to this conference with tons of people who are data scientists and so many people in the room were like, what is Seaborn? So a lot of people had never actually really heard of it or played with it. Most people have been using Plotly or Matplotlib, but not really Seaborn. And so it's, I think, the one that a lot of people are going to start migrating over to. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs> The only thing that I had to actually use, do what? Oh, sorry. Um, the question was, is there anything that Matplot, that I found that Seaborn did that Matplotlib couldn't? That's with the additional, some of the customization, so this, where? Oh. Oh, Matplotlib didn't do. I hadn't found anything necessarily. I just found that Seaborn, as far as creating the visualizations, it was just a lot easier and fewer lines of code is what I kept finding. And also the defaults just look a lot nicer to me. I think like, yeah, the color schemes are great. I mean, it's all by default. So I thought it was pretty cool. And there's so many tutorials out there. I can put it on GitHub. Yeah, I'll do that. And I'll, I'll also put some of the other um, tutorials and things that I found, because there was a guy, he went through and did a bunch of different stuff with this data set in particular that I thought was pretty neat. Um, I will say the one thing that I kind of found the most difficult with this is getting some of the data put in the right format to create some of the visualizations. That was probably the most challenging thing, but honestly, compared to what I normally deal with, because I usually use SAS, this by by far is so much easier to create really nice visualizations. Okay, awesome, thank you.